Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the AI behavior tree service. I'm going to go ahead and I fired up a quick little example behavior tree. We have a few composite nodes, a decorator, a task, and then right here we have our example service. Now a service is going to be denoted by this greenish color and it's basically going to determine what we should be doing based on events that are happening inside of our behavior tree and our game itself. The service is basically intended to be used for checking and updating things. Is our player still alive? If so, update the player blackboard value. Do we have an exit we should be going to? If so, update the exit location. Do we have any ammo left? Go ahead and update the ammo count and should we reload variable if needed? Things like that. So let's go ahead and see how we would use it and how we would create it. Services can only be attached to composite nodes. These are our gray nodes, our selector, sequence, and simple parallel, and they're easily accessed by right clicking, add service, and then choosing one of your existing services. Your list is going to populate with any created services, as well as any epic supplied services by default. At this time of recording, there is only one epic supplied service, the default focus, everything else are up to you to create and use. So creating a service, we can click on new service and then you can choose an existing parent. You can choose one that you've created or you can use the BT service blueprint base. And what this is going to do is create a new blank blueprint that is going to be of the service type. If you notice the parent class is our BT service blueprint base. Now, unique things for the service blueprint. We're going to find eight overridable functions, which we'll cover shortly. And then we'll find the service section with two advanced options, which we'll cover as well in a little bit. And that's pretty much it. Besides that, it's a normal blueprint with an event graph that's going to fire off the events inside of it based on whatever you have set up. So let's go ahead and look at the example one that I've created here. This one's intent is to basically see if we have a valid pawn being controlled by our player. If we do, we're going to set our player location and player object blackboard values. If we do not, we're going to null them out basically. Null the object and zero out the vector. So, how do we go about doing that? The class defaults has a section here called service that basically has two sections we're going to want to cover. The interval and deviation, which is our tick rate, and then these extra options which determine what we're going to do while we are using the, this task itself, this service. The important ones here are interval and our random deviation. When we are looking at our service in our behavior tray, it's going to tell you the service example service will tick every 0.4 to 0.6 seconds. That's because we've set up our interval as half a second with a deviation of 0.1. This is your tick time. If you want something to occur every one second, set it up with one second interval and maybe a random deviation of zero. It's going to fire every second on the dot as best as possible, obviously based on frame rate and other things. And of course, if you want it to occur more often, you'd set it to a lower. Maybe if something's super important, you'd set it to 0.2 with maybe a 0.1 deviation. So there you go. That is what the interval and random deviation is for. It's tied into the tick event inside of our service. Well, what is the tick event? That's going to be this right here. Let me go ahead and unconnect it and delete it. Then we're going to go ahead and see it over here in our functions. Receive tick is basically the event that comes with our blueprint that's supplied by making it a blueprint based service that will fire every time our activation interval fires. So every half a second with the deviation, we're going to hit the receive tick. And that's it. It's as simple as that. It's an adjustable tick inside of your blueprint service. So what are we doing here? Well, like I said, we're going to go ahead and see if we have a valid object being our controlled pawn. And if we do, we are getting our blackboard value 
for our location key and setting the actor's current location to it. And then we're getting a blackboard value of our controlled pawn and setting that to the player key. If we do not have a valid player, then we're basically zeroing out our location key and setting our player object to none. So this is gonna let us know whether or not we have a good player or not and where they are. Now here's a few things to keep in mind. When you are using services, if you are going to set Blackboard keys, here, player location key and player key, it's kind of like a pass-through system. In here, you have your service. In here, you have your Blackboard keys. Somehow your service has to know which Blackboard keys you want to set based on the variables you have inside of here. Now, in order for that to happen, basically, if you are using a service and you expose variables to be public, right here, it's technically editable, but it's making them public. You'll get this little yellow or green eye, depending on if you have a tooltip filled in, and it's going to make these two variables public. What that does is it now allows you to set in the service a matching pair. If we go into our service, we now see our player location key, which is this value right here, is going to be assigned to which Blackboard value? In here. And we'll set it up to match our player location key to be player location and our player key variable to be player object. So now whenever this is running and we tell it to set the blackboard value, it's going to set this value here, our player location key, to obviously whatever we want it to be, which is our vector. And then when this service runs, it's going to transfer that over to our blackboard value. So that's how you get it between your service and your blackboard, or your blackboard to your service, or for example, you're doing your checks here, or your tasks need a location or an actor to go to. That's how you transfer between your behavior tree and your blackboard making sure you have public variables and assigning them. It is very, very common if you are rushing through things, or for example, let's say we have a new selector here, and then we go ahead, okay, well, we're just gonna go ahead and add our service here for, let's go with the is player lies service, and then you move on. Well, it's defaulted to none, but you click on it and you don't pay attention, it's gonna default to your first settings, which are player object in this case which is not correct, obviously. I have variables like the location key should be location, player key should be object, and since this is used in a different behavior tree, I should have had another variable in my Blackboard. So it's very common if you're just adding services in and forgetting to set your actual keys, you're gonna, gonna get the wrong values and things aren't gonna work. So that's important. After you add in your service, make sure you click on it and set any of your default values for your Blackboard. So let's go ahead and watch this run and then we'll be able to cover the other examples. Let me go ahead and move this over so we can see it. Cooperating. And let's move this over here and here and here. Make it easier to see, there we go. And we'll go ahead and run our system. Now if you notice, we immediately had our player our enemy go to our player. And if I was to move, you're gonna find it follows. Now I have it set to move to location, that's why we're getting that little jump steps. Every every point one to point three seconds, my service is firing. It's updating the player location variable with wherever my current player is. And then that information is being passed down to my move to, and we're moving to whatever that location is. Now, if I was to go ahead and stop this, and let's go into here, and let's change our variable to something like one second, and play it again, you're gonna notice we're gonna end up with a slight delay as our player location is only updating roughly once every second. One thing to keep in mind here, because I'm using a selector, this part right here will not fire if this part is good. And since my move to location is always good, the weight is never gonna fire. So this is something we need to update inside of our playing system. Down here I have player object is set. Down here I have player object, which I'm setting every one second. Keep in mind, it's also going to fire every time this is updating. Why is that? Well, let's go ahead and uncheck that and you'll see what happens. 
wait five seconds, it moves, then it'll update my location after a second, and you notice how it's trailing behind me now. This option right here, which we had checked, which by default is checked, as you can see right here, call tick on search start. This basically, when it goes from our service to our task, this is search. This node here to here is what they're calling search. And basically you're searching for a valid task to run. When you call the tick on search start, it's going to go ahead and automatically call our tick event instead of waiting. And it's going to go ahead because the tick event ran, we'll have a valid player location, a player object, and we can immediately fire this off. With this unchecked, when we run this, it's going to fail because this was not valid the first time through, and then we end up having to wait. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want something important to happen, your tick event has something important, such as setting variables, make sure you have call tick on search start so you can go ahead and set everything up the first time. Alternately, if we don't have this set, that is what our other nodes are for. The receive activation node right here is what happens when this service node is called the first time. So when we go from here to here, the tick starts timing, which means it won't fire for a second, but our activation event fires, which is right here. So for in this case, we might wanna go in here, and since we know these are gonna be valid, if we set this up like this, and we automatically set on activation the player's location and object, Next time we run through here, instead of it failing that first time, like it was before, it's going to go ahead and run properly and find our target. Because the first time this runs through, activation fires, and activation is setting our values. So that's what your receive activation node is. It's for the first time through, you're activating the node. Now, hopefully you should be able to understand what the deactivation node is. When this is done running, basically the end play, the service becomes inactive. For example, up here we have a sequence. And we attach to the sequence a wait. As long as we are in this left branch here, right here, you're going to notice, let's see if I hit the play button, this is running, which means our activation event is running and we're good. Now when this stops and we go over to this right branch, this ends. When this ends, the deactivation node will fire. So that's useful if you want to alert something or update a value, for example, in here we've moved. Now you update a variable called AI is idle. And now you know that your AI is idle because you're no longer in this side of the branch. Our last one is going to be our receive search start, which I've already overridden here. Now let's go ahead and plug this in and you'll see how it works. Let me remove my deactivate. Let me remove my activation. Let me go ahead and remove my other branch. And remember when I mentioned how the searching works, basically when it goes from here to here, we're searching for a task. So anytime this fires off and needs to find a task to run, it's searching. So this search start is going to fire any time we go from here to here. So if we run this, you see it says hello in the top left. And then in five seconds, it's going to say hello again and move to our player. And now we're going to get spammed with hello. If we look at our behavior tree, we're getting spammed because we go from our root to our selector. We run our service. Our service looks for a task. So our search starts. We're running a move to. We're already at our move to location, therefore we succeed, which means since if this is a selector, we're going to succeed here, this will succeed to here, and then we run it back again. So you're noticing that message spam our screen because we're constantly running from here to here. Now if I was to change this to something like a sequence, for our example, and we move, and this is one thing that's nice is you can move things from node to node. Now we have a sequence running where after we move to our location, we should wait five seconds. What you're going to see happen is this right here. 
and it should stop and then we'll get another hello and then it should stop and then we'll get another hello and every time it's searching for which one of these to run we're going to get a hello because this is running and searching for a task so that is what our receive search start node is for and those are your four basic nodes inside of your service graph now in regards to our last value here which is our restart timer on each activation each service has an internal tick time that is continuous. And if you have it set to restart the timer on each activation, every single time it runs through here from the start, it root runs through our composite node, it activates this, it's gonna go ahead and restart the timer each time. So if you wanna make sure your service node is fresh, then you wanna make sure you have restart timer on each activation. And of course, these can be accessed both from here, which is your detail panel, or inside of your actual details class defaults for your service itself. So that is it. That is our service node. If you notice, it's intended to do checks. It's intended to update the blackboard. It's intended to be your key for your decorators and your tasks to give them their valid objects or locations or values that they want to work with. Services, as you noticed, it only comes with one by default. It's only going to be our default focus, which I'll explain in another video. And the reason it only comes with one is services are very unique. They're very specific to what you want done. So that's why there are no real pre-built ones. So that is our sequence node. No, that was our service node. If there are any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.